Hello everyone, welcome to the LeverX webinar series, a free educational service offered to SAP customers to inform and demonstrate SAP functionality and industry best practices to improve your business performance. Our webinar today is entitled, The Value Proposition for PLM in Client Business Terms, Part 1. This webinar, the first of a multi-part series on this subject, will discuss the journey of implementing PLM in your company. The goal of this webinar series will be to discuss the value proposition in business terms for implementing PLM across your enterprise. We will examine the benefits, value, and return on investment provided by a well-implemented PLM platform and solution and approach. My name is Alan Mendel, Vice President of LeverX, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Before we begin our topic, let me briefly introduce you to LeverX. LeverX helps companies increase business value by leveraging existing investments in SAP solutions. So the agenda today will be um, what is PLM? I'll talk a little bit about that. And my presentation will come from an SAP perspective on, on PLM and how it can be used. And then Jason will take it from there and talk from an industry perspective and then um, we'll frame up the value. Uh, what is PLM? Uh, people see PLM in um, many different ways. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about um, the history of PLM first. Um, PLM started in the old days when, when I was working at UG and prior to that we did a lot of drawings and we had to keep these drawings um, in order and we built file managers and started to collect data and, and it, it morphed into um, in PDM. Uh, on the ERP side, it came from there as well where a lot of people were working on the um, logistics side and the manufacturing side and, and the change process side and how to, to build the product and distribute the product. So there was two different directions that the PLM came from. And, and, and the, uh, the engineering side, it seemed uh, much easier and nicer and much more flexible because we didn't have to worry about the structure of the um, of the ERP side. So it was easy to put together nice UIs and, and because we had the three-dimensional um, models and assemblies we were building, we were able to generate visuals very easy and it was a very nice approach coming strictly from an engineering perspective. On the ERP side, it was more a little bit more difficult. There was a lot of structure you had to deal with, much more text-based, older UIs, um, not a lot of fun to work with. So over time, these two different approaches kind of grew together and they started to overlap in certain areas. And as time went on, customers had to choose. They had to choose between, do I want the more lightweight, more modern visual approach of a uh, engineering-based uh, PLM solution or was I going to be more in the camp of integration and my tie to manufacturing and the logistics side. So that was sort of a little bit of quick history. <clears throat> and PLM, you can see it traditionally in three different ways. There's the innovation process, the ideas of requirements and, and collecting ideas and having those ideas mature into concepts, and then bringing them to the engineering bubble where we actually do designs and we create CAD models and assemblies and build the structures and we collaborate within the organization and externally with people to develop these products. And then once we get to a point we're ready to release the manufacturing and then that handover the manufacturing and the being able to use the data that was created on the manufacturing side to be able to make the product distribute it and sell it and then and, and refurbish it and, and different things like that. So what's a good definition? This is a definition, um, SIM data and SAP definition. PLM isn't just a technology. It's about integrating people and the processes that those people use, the business systems that are required to store the data and share the data, as well as the data itself. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. This is Jason LaPlante, as Alan said. And uh, I'm going to speak now for the rest of the session regarding the industry application perspective, or in other words, coming from the business side where most of you are uh, on this webinar, how does this PLM concept or this 
idea uh, impact you. So uh, this is just a little bit about my background. Um, I've actually been on the engineering side, the product innovation side uh, of the business for 25 years, over 25 years before joining LeverX, starting in the mid-80s. And uh, I was product management, product uh, design management for all those years. And uh, as you can see from these different companies I've worked with, I tend to like big, heavy machinery that's both complex in design and uh, complex in use. So I started with uh, the ag industry, which was part of my background in that upper left corner um, with Case IH back in the mid-'80s when we were, in fact, uh, still migrating the last of the tabletop uh, draft board designers into CAD systems. <clears throat> And back then, as Pete said, we uh, would take these CAD systems and implement vaults for drawings and generate PDM systems. And at Case IH, like a lot of companies, it was a merger. And there were multiple mergers over time. And so they ended up with at least four different CAD platforms over time. And each of those CAD platforms had its own vaulting system, its own PDM system. And then eventually, the information they had to get from engineering into operations and quite honestly when I was in engineering there I thought it was magic that somehow the information got from engineering and ended up in operations and we would finally get prototypes in our development lab. So that linkage there was totally beyond my comprehension. I never even understood how it happens and that's the situation that most engineers are in. Well with a focused PLM concept what we're trying to do is eliminate that barrier, eliminate those walls and knock down those silos so that people in the engineering aspect can see what, in fact, is going on in operations, what's going on with the product in the field in terms of uh, quality and service and warranty claims, and getting all that information in the hands of the product innovators so that they can, in fact, make the next iteration of the product better than the previous. So um, when you have these large, complicated machines with lots of option variants, product variants, there's a lot of data that's involved in the process. And so um, how do you get all that information accurately on time and to the right people when they need that information? So this is very similar uh, issue for every client, every company I've actually worked for and for every client I've personally dealt with since joining LeverX about two and a half years ago. 